welcome. Uh, my name is Kim. I'm a position assistant student here at Seclair. And um, I'd like to introduce to you Julia. And she's going to tell you a little bit about what we do here at Seclair. Hi, I'm Julia. I'm a PA student from Chatham University. And I'm on my rotation along with these other two and Jim um, at my Seclair psychiatry rotation. Uh, Seclair is a holistic psychiatric facility that focuses on people and not their um, diagnoses. And I'm Ashley, I'm a PA student as well. And here we really try to, as PA students, bring you a little tidbit of scientific knowledge and practical application each week. Um, and then this is Jim Ellermeyer. He's a behavioral health um, therapist here at Seclair. He's known for his wise words. <laughs> <laughs> well, normally I've been uh, told off. And again, I'm Jim, a behavioral health therapist at Seclair. And I thank uh, my colleagues so much for taking up uh, handling most of the hosting tasks for today as I've been told that I'm in love with the sound of my own voice and I would tell everyone out there that I indeed I am. So what we're going to talk a little bit about today, quite often what we talk about is how the past impacts your present and how everyone is a product of their past, are they not? Mm -hmm. So what, what most people don't understand is they have a choice as to whether to be a victim of that past. So none of you hatched within the last 30 seconds, have you? No. no. So remember, it's our past memories, it's our past people, places, things, circumstances, events in our life that has had a great deal of influence in shaping our perceptions on how we view ourselves and how we view the world. And what we like to talk about is here at Seclair is positive, beneficial ways that we can adjust, change, or enhance those views. Okay. So Jim sort of stole my thunder there a little bit with the, we didn't hatch. That was going to be my line, but that's okay. So, <laughs> Say um, it again. So we don't hatch. That's still going to be my line. Um, so what Jim sort of was speaking about before is the fact that each one of us, no matter what, no matter what your background is, every single one of us has had a past from the time we were born up until our present moment. Um, and those events in the past shape who we are, the way that we handled them, in the past, things that happened to us that occurred either by chance or because of situations we got ourselves into, they shape and um, sort of form us into the person that we are today. That's not to say that we can't learn from that, that person that we've become or change it and go a different way, but it does mean that everything leading up to our present moment has sort of impacted us and shaped who we are at the present. Going off what Julia has said, your self-concept and your self-esteem is all part of your storyline, so you shouldn't be defined by your past, but sometimes we have some negative experiences in our past that we have to go back and kind of take a look at as possible trigger or catalyst for our current feelings about a situation. So subconsciously, we may be feeling something and not realize it, and so I'll lead into Jim talking a little bit more about something called a timeline. Yeah, and so we might have, you know, certain times in our lives, certain experiences where we might feel happiness, um, joy, success, or we could have felt the opposite. Um, and it's how we respond to those experiences that um, kind of impact us, you know, in the real time moments that we have. So the goal of today, um, what we're going to practice and sort of emphasize is identifying um, specific things in our past that have made us um, or sort of created our present um, us. That's a bad way of saying it. But um, so looking at our past and thinking, okay, how did that experience or that circumstance shape who I am today? Um, and how did it define me? And sort of labeling and identifying that, taking ownership over it, and then saying, okay, what do I want to do with that? Am I happy with the person I am today? Or do I want to sort of deviate from that, become something different in this present moment in the future. Um, so the old saying that old dogs can't um, learn new tricks, it, we're going to sort of nix that and say that old dogs can in fact learn new tricks. So um, taking our old habits, our old feelings and sort of um, owning them, renaming them and using them to progress forward and change. And um, just some ways that uh, you can do this. Um, the first is just taking time to reflect, you know, think about the positive moments that you've had, thinking about the negative moments, and just kind of the neutral moments where nothing necessarily good or bad happened, but just thinking about all those and reflecting on them, because they've all played a part kind of in your timeline. Um, and then the second is that conflicts are kind of important markers in our life, um, even though they might not be pleasant or, you know, fun to go through. 
they definitely are important. Um, like I said, markers, they kind of make you who you are today. Um, and the third, just I mean, we're going to try to put those kind of in chronological order, just kind of thinking back, um, you know, what happened first, what led to what, um, and so forth. So kind of going off of that, put onto a sheet of paper that nothing is written in stone, everything in life is fluid. So we practice the concept of mindfulness here, so it's important to root yourself in the present moment, you know, feel the ground underneath your feet, breathe in a few deep breaths, kind of notice what's going on around you. So it's important to kind of be fluid, and if we want to go back to those moments, sometimes we have to remind ourselves, like Jim says, it's what time is it right now? So try to be present in the present moment rather than kind of going back to the past and dwelling there and being a time traveler. And then we oftentimes think of each, each event as very stressful and negative. So a good idea would be to rate it on a scale of 1 to 10. And when you think back on it, it's really not as bad as you may originally have thought when you really take that time to sit and reflect. Um, and I will deflect to Jim for some more wise words. <laughs> You're making a big assumption there. So what the uh, idea that we're trying to convey to everyone out there is that it's like anything that we own. We own our past. And what we do is where we make a conscious choice to own our past, to find our part in it, to fully realize our, our the part that we've played in it, and also to avoid allowing that past to own us. We avoid bringing that pain of the past into the present moment and continue to re-experiencing over and over again. I know that many people, the past is, is a, quite often a painful experience for them. So my suggestion is that should you run into any particular type of memories or events that evoke some type of trauma or some type of uh, specific uh, negative response in your life, uh, I would highly recommend that you contact a, uh, a trained therapist, a trained psychiatrist, psychologist to work with you through this timeline. And there is a, a trademarked uh, therapy method called timeline therapy. And my suggestion is that if you should be interested in that, you can you can certainly, certainly pursue that. But we want to just put something out there that uh, be a nice thing for you to, uh, to work on on your own. And as always, we leave you with a free prescription, fruits, nuts, and vegetables. Unplug your television and perhaps take up fishing. And for a truly mindful experience, we ask everyone out there to fish without bait, a lifetime without expectations. Please be good to each other. Please show a kindness to another today. Share, share the positivity. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.